Épidémie, la disparition répétée d'ordinateurs, de journalistes travaillant sur le Herzlich willkommen zu Crossing Europe Festival TV. Wir sind hier in Linz beim Crossing Europe Festival. Das ist das Festival für europäisches Autoren- und Autorinnenkino jährlich hier in Linz. Ja, wer sind wir? Wir sind äh, Kino 5 und zwölf junge Filmschaffende, junge Videojournalisten aus Slowenien, Frankreich, Rumänien und Österreich, die sich hier getroffen haben, um täglich vom Festival, vom Crossing Europe Festival zu berichten. Ähm, diese Sendungen sind dann täglich gelaufen auf dem äh, Linzer Community TV Sender Dorf und jetzt, eben heute, äh, zeigen wir euch einige Ausschnitte aus diesen Sendungen auf Okto TV. Ja, jetzt wollte ich noch ein bisschen herumgehen. Wir sind hier in den Räumlichkeiten der Kunstuni in Linz, die uns eben die Räumlichkeiten zum Schnitt zur Verfügung gestellt haben und auch das Equipment wie dieses tolle Ansteckmikro. Es ähm, ist ein Luxus, mal mit sowas drehen zu dürfen. Tja, und wie schon erwähnt, wir haben eben hier zum Beispiel ein paar Teilnehmer aus Slowenien, die gerade weiß nicht was machen. <lacht> Aber hier zum Beispiel sind wir gerade beim Schnitt und beim Export von der Sendung von gestern. Die laden wir gerade hoch aufs Internet. Die könnt ihr euch nämlich auch auf YouTube dann anschauen, auf unserem Kino 5 YouTube-Kanal. Ja, was erwartet euch in dem heutigen Beitrag? Zum Beispiel haben wir ähm, ein Interview mit Nano Leopold, das ist die Regisseurin des äh, Öffnungsfilms Brown in Movement, äh, mit der haben wir ein Interview geführt, da werdet ihr ein paar Ausschnitte sehen. Unter anderem bringen wir auch ein Gespräch mit Hund und Horn die, und zeigen auch Videoausschnitte aus ihren äh, experimentellen Videos. Hund und Horn waren heuer die Artists in Residence beim Crossing Europe Film Festival. Und dann gibt es auch noch ein paar ganz lustige Beiträge, wie zum Beispiel von, unseren französischen, äh, von unserer französischen Delegation, die äh, Gäste beim Crossing Europe Film Festival gefragt haben, was sie über den französischen Film denken. Und, was mir persönlich besonders gut gefallen hat, gab es parallel zum Crossing Europe Film Festival auch ein Daumenkino Festival. Auch davon werdet ihr einen kleinen Beitrag sehen. Ja, so viel hierzu. Das Crossing Europe Film Festival ist ja, wie gesagt, leider schon vorbei. Erst nächstes Jahr wieder im April in Linz. Daher schaut euch ein paar Beiträge an. Das ganze Material, die vollen Länge der Beiträge, findet ihr dann eben im Internet, wenn ihr es euch auch dort nochmal ansehen wollt. Viel Spaß mit der Sendung und bis bald. Crossing Europe, the International Film Festival in Linz is now open. Five days, 160 films, 18,000 visitors. The eighth edition of the festival is proving to become more and more popular in the European cinematographic scene. Crossing Europe's goal is to present films from all over Europe, from the high north to the deep south. The festival's ambition is to show extraordinary films that the public will not usually see in blockbuster cinemas. It builds a bridge between the other two big Austrian film festivals. This year, a special focus is set on the film history series Red Western. What do you expect from the Crossing Europe Festival this year? Yeah, I expect that the audience really like the films we selected for them and that a lot of young people will join us because it's actually from young directors and a lot of film students are here. So it should be the opportunity to meet directors, get in contact with them, exchange ideas and to enjoy the atmosphere. So we have beside the films parties and nightline and exhibitions and a lot of things like festival TV is going on so I hope it will be a nice week also the weather is not so nice <laughs>
Um, is the Cross in Europe uh, festival um, a special festival in Europe or in Austria? Uh, in Austria, for, for sure, because uh, we have uh, the main festival is Viennale, it's a world film festival, it's, it's really huge. And there is a national film festival, Diagonale, and we thought uh, we uh, take our position in between European cont contemporary young cinema, eccentric, uh, extraordinary films you can't see anymore in uh, regular cinemas, so because uh, they are maybe too risky, too uh, outstanding. So this uh, is the position of the festival. And we want to bring a lot of uh, people from abroad, from all over Europe, to uh, mingle. That's the idea. Uh, finden Sie, dass Cross Europe ein spezielles Filmfestival ist? Ja, in einer Richtung ja. Aber äh, ich meine, es ist aber gut, dass man sich sieht, dass man eben vielleicht die Liebe zum Kino wieder entdeckt. Ja, und viele äh, Künstler für ihre Filme, die Inhalte haben, die Botschaften haben. Das ist wichtig heutzutage. Well, it is something uh, different from uh, maybe other festivals. It's original. It's special for our local artists, especially because uh, this uh, film festival gives, also gives us a, a chance that we will bring our little movies or big, bigger movies into the cinemas. So that this festival actually helps us to bring our movies into the cinemas. In this case, I wanted to make a love story, but it's more in the moment, if you say for better, for worse, it's the for worse moment where things are really uh, at a strain. And I wanted to see uh, what happens if you look at a relationship that the people are so far away from each other and if they can go back and love each other again. I think it's a, a, a strong woman, an intelligent woman, and I think uh, she made a decision for herself that she wanted to find out something. But I don't really know. I mean, that's like the secret of the film. But uh, it's, it plays for a, a big part of the film in a room that she rents, where she invites these men to have sex with. And for me, this room is like a safe house, like a room of one's own. Like if you had a space, if it would be possible to have a space where you could be without being judged and without uh, where you could act without consequences, then what would you do? And of course it doesn't exist, so once she goes out of the room, uh, everything collapses and she has to confront what she did and her husband. What did you ask of him? shouldn't be saying it. I shouldn't tell it all. It only makes it worse. I get many questions about the dialogues and that the, the actors don't speak a lot with each other in the scenes, but I think you could also make the scenes with lots of words and lots of saying uh, things to each other, but it doesn't change. The real thing is what is between the lines, especially if you're very close to somebody. It's much more about what is not being said, and and you know it. I mean, if it's the way you know your partner, you you know uh, the things that are not being said and are there. Like, do, will you do the dishes? No, I'm really <coughs> tired. It doesn't matter. It's uh, it's in between. So, and that's what also interests me, to show these little moments between people who are very close and then something happens that make them look at each other uh, for the first time in a new light because they also can think they, don't, they do not know each other because the husband never knew his wife would do something like that. So I wrote initially more dialogue that many things don't have to be said and can just be communicated by uh, sort of visual uh, language or body language. In a scene between a husband and wife, if you look at each other, it's already different than if you are apart from each other. You can tell many things by uh, physical language, body language. If 
when I was a young man, 21, uh, it was a, a kind of energy uh, in me. I must leave this horrible Austria. And uh, Berlin, or for one year Berlin West, it was really an island uh, of uh, desire for a special way of life. And it was good to do this jump from Austria to Berlin West and later Berlin. And I like to live there. I have done my two studying there, first journalism and second uh, becoming a film director at Potsdam Film School. And I made films uh, in a very closed uh, space. All my subjects I have found in Berlin and in the surrounding landscape uh, of Berlin doing one film after the other. And uh, in the last year, the idea uh, arised um, to come back and to watch uh, what has changed or what uh, stayed continuously. Uh, and I was interested in the story of my family, which is also connected, of course, with uh, global stories. And this was the initial point to to come back as a filmmaker. Of course, I came back yeah. as a person, but I returned first time as a filmmaker. <laughs> Plötzlich klingelt es und die Frau Schreiberhuber kommt. Sie ist eine sehr feine Frau und kommt aus Polen, aus der Nähe von Sakopane. Sie wollte Mode studieren in Paris. Da ist die Wehrmacht einmarschiert und hat 200 junge Frauen gebraucht. Mit zwei Viehwaggons sind sie nach Wien gebracht worden. Ein Waggon ist in Wien geblieben, der andere nach Linz weitergefahren. Dort sind die 100 Frauen auf die umliegenden Bauernhöfe und Fabriken verteilt worden. So ist sie nach Ansfelden gekommen. Die Bäuerin hat mit ihr Deutsch gelernt, weil sie hat ja Polnisch und Russisch gesprochen. Sie war eine sehr attraktive Frau. Die Bauern im Dorf sind auf einer Bank gesessen und haben ihr nachgepfiffen. Solche Trotteln, sagt sie. The first edition of the Austrian Flip Book Festival Flipped launched on Wednesday night. Featuring a retrospective of the submitted works during Crossing Europe Festival, here is a sneak preview of the exhibits. Pnia is, um, is an underwater film. And then I was like, I love swimming and diving, and I was like swimming in the pool. And then I just saw this scene of somebody sitting on a sofa, on a couch, watching TV. I saw it in front of my eyes. So, uh, and then um, I thought it would be great follow up to Tomato Heads and Shopping Furniture. and. Um, so like tomato heads and dropping furniture have to do with gravity and like swimming also has, has to do with gravity. And that's how the whole thing evolved. Uh, first there was the idea and then I saw, okay, it would be very um, 
uh, would be great to link to link the film to Tomato Heads and Dropping Furniture. No, it was not done by post production. It's all live. I mean, you, what you see is what you see. Um, and uh, the, the actors were all um, apnea divers, so that they they were trained to um, keep the air inside for a minute underwater. And every actor had a security diver beside him, and he delivered the air when it was necessary. So we had like to shoot very short shots and for less than a minute. The most complicated thing is that. Um, Everything is lighter than water, so if you have like toast or cornflakes or even tissues, um, it swims. So we had to keep everything down and that, that was a kind of a problem because we needed to put a lot of weights for everything we, we used on water, even the clothes. For example, if you lay down on a bed, um, you have to put a lot of weight, like 80 kilos on the, on the actor. So he can like stay underground, you know, because if you do, if you don't, everything, the hands and the arms and the legs are like swinging up. You know? Oh my God, I'm here to reporting for the Crossing Film Festival. Maybe it's my last tape. I'm going to watch the film Kidnap. I hope you will enjoy it. I really hope you will enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this interview. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Of course. Um, my name is Markus Koschnik. I'm uh, actually from the Tyrol, but I moved to Vienna 10 years ago and there I started working as a film critic, traveling around traveling around to um, lots of different festivals, Cannes, Berlin, Venice, but also smaller ones. Um, and I've always been very interested in genre cinema, in horror cinema. I grew up with it. This was basically my passion from the early, you know, early years. I'm kind of this videotech child. I was uh, dumped by my parents, not really dumped, but, you know, each weekend I was allowed to go to the local video store mm -hmm. and rent for uh, four videos over the yeah. weekend. And at first it was kind, kind of children's animation films, but then it um, was horror, horror, horror movies. movies. Yes. And what's the defi definition for you for, of a good horror movie? It has to get me emotionally. I have to feel something. That's something that I'm always looking, um, no matter what kind of movie that I'm watching, um, it has to do something to me. It has to tell me a story, it has to connect with me. And on, on which level um, uh, it achieves that, uh, it depends. So right now we just see a good movie, a Knapped. Can you tell us a little bit more about this horror movie, the story and the emotion that they bring to the audience? Yes, uh, Sequestrados is a film by Miguel Angel Vivas. He's a um, Spanish director. It's his uh, second film. Um, he's a very slow-paced director, actually. His um, previous one uh, was in 2002. So it took almost 10 years uh, to, to do another film. I think you've all seen it or you can see it because it's really um, stylistically perfect and very well crafted. So it takes his time. <laughs> It was awesome. It was awesome. Really amazing, yeah. Especially okay. the end and the split screen. It was really impressive. Okay, so you think it's a good movie at the end? It is, yeah. Okay. I hope it comes to the big screen. It's a shame of a movie. It's too bloody, too splatter, too everything. I think I need to go to the concert maybe to get like relaxed again because it was too hard. Do you see your movie ah, as an act okay. of resistance? Oh yeah, of course, <laughs> I do. 
Yeah, it's about um, yeah lesbians and their strategies in Poland against homophobia. So it's uh, yeah a resistance film, a, a mov film about a movement of resistance. <laughs> Dzieci, droga pani, po prostu nienawidzą. A dzieci są do adopcji potrzebne tylko im do tego, żeby po prostu mogli ewentualnie organy od nich wziąć czy posłużyć się jako kurunty. Dlatego adoptują obce dzieci, bo z własnymi no to trochę nie bardzo mogliby to robić. Takie to jest. Nie nic innego. No. Do widzenia. I dobrze, że policja nie puściła na rynek. Yes, but um, more than the film itself that talks about resistance and surviving, I think uh, having made this movie is also an act of, of resistance because the, the way to do it uh, with uh, very young people uh, who was the first time who, who was facing a, a feature film and also trying to, to found to fund, fund it, I mean, to, to get uh, funding, uh, was very, um, very alternative way because we, we couldn't go to, to traditional um, organizations to, to get funding because we, we were nobody, so nobody would give us money. And, and then we, we did like a very, very small fundings of uh, non-profit organizations. So then we we made the film like this. I mean, like uh, very transversal and and very participative with uh, a lot of institutions. Okay, Michael, do you see your movie as an act of resistance? No, I don't. Um, it interference is not made as a resistance film, but I would like to think that the film makes it more difficult for any audience to resist thinking because sometimes I believe that um, qualified questions are much more interesting than answers and uh, the questions that is in into eternity in relationship to nuclear waste and what to do with it whether or not to warn the future if that's possible at all uh, I think these are questions that is something that we all have to, in a way, deal with because it's our time that um, has the benefit of nuclear energy. So even if you actually are against nuclear energy, it won't in itself make the nuclear waste go away. It's already here. So hopefully it'll make people think. I am now in this place where you should never come. We call it Onkelo. Onkelo means hiding place. In my time, it is still unfinished, though work began in the 20th century when I was just a child. Work would be completed in the 22nd century, long after my death. Onkelo must last 100,000 years. Nothing built by man has lasted even a tenth of that time span. But we consider ourselves a very potent civilization. If we succeed, Onkelo will most likely be the longest lasting remains of our civilization. If you sometime find to the future find this, what would it tell you about us? I started working uh, on a project about the policies about immigration and social movements since 2006. And the beginning of the, this film uh, is about the situation of the migrants in a town in the north of France, Calais, with a lot of uh, uh, a town where a lot of uh, people are in transit. The question of immigration now, I think, are uh, in the public space, in the public area. It's a um, question very important. And uh, this kind of question are, um, for me, instrumentalized by uh, uh, the politician. You know, it's a, the, the policies about immigration now, it's uh, like a challenge for the politician to win some uh, uh, election. I think it was uh, interesting to try to show what is the, the consequences of the European policies about immigration, because the consequences are very uh, terrible. 
I think ever, if, uh, each people need to uh, to find a way to try to connect with the with the world. You know, uh, you you're a journalist. Uh, me, I'm a filmmaker. And with my film, I try to take position about the reality. To, I, I, I try to uh, to build this relationship. If these people live in the streets, if these, the people live in the jungle, you know, the jungle is the name of the little wood uh, outside the town where the Afghans live, is the consequences of the, poli of the policies about immigration in Europe and in France. So it's a political situation. And for me, it's very important to, uh, to try to present this uh, kind of thing with a, social, uh, with a political approach and not with compassion, something like that. On est suffisamment formaté, on est dans une société, société qui l'est de plus en plus. Il n'y a pas un espace euh, où on soit euh, surveillé, filmé, etc., etc. Donc il faut être le plus audacieux possible. Il faut s'accorder toutes les libertés. We are the Frenchies of the crew and only interested in French cinema. Uh, what's your opinion on French cinema? Um, yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. No. So what's your favorite French movie? Amelie. Amelie. Amelie movie. Amelie. I think it's still... Oh, is it a French movie? Is this from French or is this a Hollywood? Can you play a scene for us at François Ozon? But some were nice. What, what, what was it? J'aime le cinéma français. J'aime le cinéma français. <laughs> yeah, I like French cinema. Oh, J'adore le cinéma français. Parfait. J'aime le cinéma français. The thing is that uh, you hardly can see short animated uh, films out of a festival circuit. So that's you know the the biggest uh, problem. Like there are no there's no TV distribution. There is no way that you would see a short film uh, in a cinema being presented before the uh, feature film. So at the end, like festivals and the internet is the only. Um, uh, Meaning, I mean, only medium where you can go, uh, see these films, with the difference that at the festival the program is curated, which means like the somebody is putting those films in a, in a right order or is choosing them, you know, according to a, some re rhythm of, of the screening. And in Ljubljana, like the audience, they don't have uh, another chance, so it's like they they, they are forced to, to watch whatever we presented to them. But I think that we found uh, kind of a nice uh, um, program. Uh, um, concept because uh, besides the competition of uh, short from Central and Eastern Europe we are screening for uh, the youngest public an international program of uh, animated films for children it has its own special public like in the mornings with discussions and uh, presentation of the, of the films in advance and then we last year we started a new competition program which is like European uh, students which, like the production is really, really strong uh, in the last five years and uh, they deserve to have their own program um, specifically for, for them. 